Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, the easiest knife making project you'll ever do. This right here, a simple neck knife. Ever wanted to make a knife, but you just couldn't quite get up a full head of steam to do it? Well, today is your lucky day because this is very possibly the simplest, easiest knife build that I've ever done. This knife right here is the Luna. It's an affordable neck knife that I make for my Tactics Armory uh, knife making line. Now, when I do it in my shop, I use that thing over there and this other thing over here, and this thing right here. Yeah, we're not doing that. We'll be using this amazingly cheap belt grinder from Harbor Freight. All right, let's get started. We'll be using a steel called O1. It's relatively easy to get hold of. It's sold by industrial supply places on the internet, Granger, MSC, ton of other places in what's known as precision ground form, which means it's ground to very specific dimensions. This makes it a little more expensive, but real easy to deal with. Often they call it oil hardening steel rather than calling it by its official name, which again is O1. I'm just using a scrap piece here that I screwed up making another knife one time. It'll be a perfect fit for the very small knife we'll be making. Now, I'm using this little plastic template to scribe the lines. More on that in a second. If you want to just guesstimate things, hey, that is not a problem. But if you want to duplicate uh, this knife right here to the T, I'm going to give you a couple options. Now, if you support the channel on Patreon already, or if you sign up to do that, link at the cards in description, I've got plans for this blade and tons of other knife builds on the uh, Patreon website. But for the next few weeks, I'm gonna try something I've never done just to see if people like it. So here's the deal. You can go to tacticsarmory.com, that is my website, and you can pick up a copy of the actual Luna itself uh, to use as a model, kind of just to see how I went about making this thing. Like I said, it is the most reasonably priced knife that I've ever made, so not super expensive. And if you use the coupon code BUILD, B-U-I-L-D, I'll knock 10 bucks off the price, and I'll throw in a copy of the plans for the Luna plus this nifty little plastic pattern that I showed you. Good idea, bad idea, I don't know. Look, I'm always trying stuff to help you guys make knives, so let me know what you think. Anyway, if you do it this way, you can just do what I'm doing here, slap the pattern down on the steel, trace around it, and you've got the exact same shape uh, as the original right here. So, like I said, just something new. We're just trying it out, see how you guys like it. Anyway, professional knife makers and machinists use layout fluid for the thing we'll be doing next, but we're going to try and do everything cheap and simple today. So, we'll just use a Sharpie. Then we'll take this little template made from, I said plastic earlier, but strictly speaking, it's micarta. We'll slap it down and scribe around it. I'm using a carbide scribe, but you could just as easily use a sharpened nail. Now we'll start grinding, and we'll do this using this little grinder that I mentioned earlier. So I used to kind of write off cheapo little grinders like this. I mean, look, you can just pick it up like this. It's a one by 30, super cheap. I think I paid 60 bucks at Harbor Freight for it. Look. Is it as good as my Amera braid or you know one of my professional grinders? No, it's not even close, but it does work. I've tried these things, I've made knives with them, I'm gonna make one today, so you can absolutely make a knife with this little grinder right here. So all I'll do is plop it down on the table and start grinding. Here I'm using a 36 grit ceramic belt. Easy to find on the internet, one by 30 inches. 1 inch wide, 30 inches long. Grinders like this usually come with a 60 grit aluminum oxide belt. Those are basically junk. Do yourself a favor. Go out and buy ceramic belts for roughing. 36, 60, and 120 grit. These grinders are pretty underpowered, so you have to go gently or you'll stall them out like this. But that's cool. We're in no rush. Still only takes about 15 minutes to get the outline worked out. 
When the blade gets hot, which it will, dip it in a bucket of water. Notice that I'm using all parts of the belt, not just the flat. I'll be biting in on the corners of the belt to get this inside curve, which is the hardest one to grind. If you end up with a kind of uneven curve, grab a round file, or better yet, a half round like this, and clean up that inside curve, evening everything up. As you can see from the Tactics Armory models I'm working on here, the blade features a little lunar surface, stone surface, whatever you want to call it. Totally optional, but I'll show you how you can do it if you want to. First, I'll mark the area where you want to put the pattern. The point here is we're going to be doing some drilling, and I'm trying to keep the drill away from the edge for reasons you'll see in a minute. Now I'll mark the places where each of these little craters will appear. Next, over to the drill press. Using the stub length quarter inch drill, I'll just dimple the surface, setting my quill stops so that they're going to a reasonably similar depth. Now you can do all of this with a hand drill, just fine. If you're going to do it on a drill press, I highly recommend using a drill vise. This piece of junk cost me, I think, $19 or something. Compared to my 750 buck Kurtz that I have on my milling machines, this is a terrible piece of crap. But for this, it works great. Keeping your tools steady against the blade so it won't shift or spin around. And by the way, that's why we want to keep these dimples from getting out to the edge. If your drill gets outside and hits that edge, there's a good chance it'll break your drill or throw the knife around or something. It's just not good. So you want to stay in the middle. Now for a kind of unusual tool, at least for folks with normal shops. This is called a ball end mill. In this case, 3 8 inches in diameter. Now they're made for use in big machine tools like my CNC machine over there, but we're going to cheat and use them in a drill press. Now machinists will call the police on you for doing this, so don't tell anybody. Again, you can buy them from places like Granger. Now we'll just chuck it up and use the little dimples that we've already made with the drill as guides to keep it steady. Bip, 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 just expanding the divots into little craters, and that's that. Now for the hardest part of the grinding, the bevels. That's the cutty part of the knife. It's helpful to scribe some guidelines so that we don't grind too far in one direction or the other. First, a center line. If you have pro knife making gear, you'd use these sort of things. But tape an eighth inch drill to a piece of melamine or really anything that's nice and flat. Then scrub the blade up and down both sides so it's symmetrical. Now I'm taping it so it won't roll and give you a wobbly line. Now in this case, I'll actually use real layout fluid just so you can see how that works. Not much different from the Sharpie. Scribe in another line parallel with the edge with a pair of cheap calipers. So that's where we're aiming to terminate the grind. Okay, now just lean the blade up against the platen. See how I'm setting it there at an angle? About five degrees if anybody's checking. Then I start grinding. Now you can do it against the table like this. Or you can lift it up and support it with your fingers, which is my preferred method. Now, I won't lie, this grinder will not grind as accurately as a pro grinder. And while I'm in not lying mode, the fact is grinding bevels is a fairly high skill endeavor. So you won't get this perfectly on the first go. You may have to clean things up a little with a file, but that's okay. Now, I'm grinding with a 36 grit belt, but I've been doing this for a quarter century now. If this is your first time, I'd recommend starting with 60 grit. It'll go a little slower and grind a little more predictably, so that'll help you out. Next, I'll turn to a 120 grit belt to clean it up and finish it off. Here's what you're aiming for. Good chance you won't get lines quite this clean, but once you get the general idea on both sides, you're ready for the fun part, heat treating. That's the process of turning this reasonably soft steel into something hard enough to hold a good edge. 
Now, this is the part in my more basic builds where I always say, well, there are a whole bunch of ways of doing this. And literally, you can do it in a backyard barbecue. As long as you have a little blower, a hair dryer, or something like that will do the trick to pump some air in it and, and really get that charcoal heating. But we're going to do this in a homemade mini forge. This one cost me, I don't know, maybe 50 bucks or something like that. I'll link to the video where I showed how to make it. You can buy more robust versions of this same kind of design on the interwebs for dirt cheap if you don't want to make one yourself. So what I'm aiming to do here is to get the blade nice and evenly heated to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. How can you tell that it's 1500 degrees? At 1425 Fahrenheit, steel loses its magnetism. So just tap it with a little magnet on a stick and you'll know exactly when you hit that 1425 point. Now I like to do this in the dark where I can really see the colors which help you understand what the actual temperatures are. I just barely, barely, barely want to sneak past that 1425 temperature. In the dark you want to keep the blade reddish orange. If it gets past that up into bright orange and yellow it's getting too hot and that's not good for the blade. So once I get it just past magnetic and to a nice even orange color Bam, I sink the whole thing down into a small bucket of cooking oil. Peanut oil works just fine with O1 steel. It's not what the pros use, but guess what? It'll do just fine. Next, a hardness check with a file. See, nice and hard. If the corner of the file skates on the surface instead of biting in, the quench worked. And now you have a knife instead of what knife makers call a KSO, that is a knife shaped object. A little acetone, that's nail polish remover for you amateur chemists to degrease it. Then I'll stick it in my heat treating oven for 400 Fahrenheit for two hours to temper it, that is to make it less brittle. Can you do this in your kitchen oven? Absolutely. Now we have a perfectly tempered blade that looks like it came out of the bottom of a river. Let's pretty it up. I'm going to very quickly show you a bunch of ways to do that, and you can pick one based on the gear you happen to have cluttering up your garage. First, sandpaper. There are 8 billion videos on YouTube, including over 700,000 of mine, that show how to do this. The slowest and most boring way to finish a knife. So we're going to quickly move on. Now, one of the many great inventions to come out of the labs of the Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company, that's 3M, is Scotch-Brite. Now, again, you can do this by hand, but there's a better way. I'm using a belt known as a surface conditioning belt, basically just Scotch-Brite. I don't happen to have one for this little 1x30, so bear with me when I do it on one of my pro grinders. But if you want to do this at home, you can get a surface conditioning belt for your little Harbor Freight grinder, and it'll work exactly the same. So let's blend all the corners and brighten up the surface. But what about all these little craters? Will I have to do them by hand? Heaven forfend. Let's turn to this fancy machinist's tool. A little careful prep. Chuck it up. Now we'll put a point on it. Grab that scotch bright. Don't tell your wife you're going to chop it all up. And then you do this. Cleans them right up. Okay, here's another way. Very technical how you do this. You point the thingy at the other thingy and then you blast away. Blast away, blast away, blast away. Done. Don't like that one? How about this? Another Harbor Freight special, a rock tumbler. 
chunk it in there, crank it up, walk away. Come back a few hours later, here's what you got. So you could stop anywhere along the way, or even just leave all the grunge from the heat treating on there. That's kind of cool looking too. Find the look that suits your taste and your shop, and you're done. Which one do you like? Got a favorite simple finishing technique that I didn't show here? Leave a comment if you get the urge. Basic, basic knife. Cuts just as well as if we had an inlaid ivory handle S3 500 G 791 Z steel blade laser engraving compound grind mill stuff. Yeah, look, it's a knife. It cuts. Hang it around your neck. It'll be there when you need it. Is there really another reason to have a knife? Well, I hope this was fun for you. You know, if there's a lesson here, it's that knife making is a hobby that you can get started in without spending a ton of money. Now, for a neck knife to work as a neck knife, which, hey, look, you can throw this thing in the center console of your truck or something. Nothing says you got to have a sheath. But if you want a sheath like this one right here, Kydex is the way to fly. So I'm going to show you a couple ways to make a sheath like this Kydex uh, in my next video, which will be coming out in a few days. All right. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years. So I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com